Right. Black Science TV 111, Osaka 4, I'm back at y'all again. Um, today I'm coming to talk about identity. Because a lot of us are lost um, over the identity that we are supposed to be connected to. We have so many identities pertaining to culture, nationality, color, things of that nature. The man or woman with an identity is the man or woman who seeks to be artificial. I'm going to say it again. The man or woman with an identity is the man or woman who is seeking to be artificial. What do I mean by that? Because when you attach labels to anything, it becomes what? A product. And I'm going to take my time tonight. Because I'm feeling good and I'm all up and through the constellations. Um, and the things that I'm seeing right now, maybe it's constructed to be seen in other jurisdictional realms of the dream state. The dream state, which is more of a reality than where we are now. And when I say where we are now, I'm talking about a place. But it's not a real place. It's a place that's real because the unknown thing that we're connected to is making it real inside of a brain that is not a mind. And because we have a brain that is not a mind, the brain is not ours. So the brain that is being controlled by this jurisdictional dimension has information already recorded in it. And the information that's already recorded in it is the information that we will live out here. It's not our real information. It's just artificial intelligence. I know you hear that a lot, artificial intelligence. But we're here to talk about identity. What does identity have to do with the matrix? Because when you are inside a matrix, and then you try to identify yourself inside of a matrix, then you become a part of the matrix that you are receiving your identity from. And if you are receiving your identity from the matrix, and the matrix is in the bloodline of the illusion, which you make a reality, which is not a reality, then you become a part of that illusion. So how powerful are you? You are inside of a matrix trying to find a truth that is you. We leave religion and think we find the truth. A lot of us leave religion and then we try to judge religion or religious people and say, well, y'all keep on seeking things out of yourself, praying for something in the sky, praying for something outside of yourself. But that's the very thing that spiritual people, some spiritual people do, or some so-called conscious people do when they leave religion. Instead of you calling it God, you calling it a higher power. You calling it a greater force. That's fine. That's cool. But what's the difference? All you're doing is putting another mask on something that is outside of you. See, there's nothing wrong with the mask that we put on it. The only thing that's wrong is that we're still acknowledging it from being outside of us and from being separate from us. The truth that we are seeking is us. The greater force that we're trying to connect to is us. And this is why we can't find ourselves. Because we're busy trying to find something that a man made instead of finding the thing that is us, which is ourself. Now, bear with me for a while. I'm, 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 I want to get down to the nitty gritty of what the ancestors has given to me. When I say the ancestors, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about anything outside of myself. I'm talking about the ancestors that I lived through throughout every jurisdictional dimension of history. The pyramids that you said that the ancestors built, I'm the ancestors that I'm, I am the ancestors that built it. The ancestors that you said could see the stars without the microscopes, I'm the ancestors that was able to analyze and see those stars without microscopes. I don't detach myself from things anymore because I find that it's still religious. Every time we take something and we Disconnected from myself. It's just like disconnecting 
the cord from the wall, from the power source. You become powerless because you still have to, because you are still looking for something to save you. You are still sending your energy outwardly instead of putting it inwardly. You don't believe or you don't think or you don't know that the thing that you are seeking outwardly is really you. It's just like you looking in the mirror talking to yourself. So if you sit in the mirror and you say, I pray to that person in the mirror, and you say, well, if this person is not me, then guess what? You're not going to be able to see a reflection of yourself through the thing that you are seeing through the mirror because you are conditioned through a physical lens to assume that the thing that is reflecting you is not you. And this is where you become powerless. Every, everything starts here. I know y'all like, oh, sake of four, I always talk about the mind, but why is it so important that I put emphasis on the mind? Because it is the mind that allows you to think. It is the mind that allows even the physical limbs, limbs on your body to be able to move. It is your mind that allows you to dream. So without this component, we would not be able to tap into or to decode the matrix. It's nothing wrong with making an illusion a reality, but if you are making an illusion your reality, make sure that that illusion is going to benefit you. It's like the people at the top. They took your science and they found out that it's two different realities. It's like two twins that's fraternal, not identical. But you have a reality that looked like another reality, but it has a distinct, both have a distinct way of moving, traveling, being, recorded, connection to you. But you can't see it. This is like twins. Oh, I can tell you apart. You a little bigger. You got a scar on your face. That's what the two realities is like. It's like fraternal twins. And unless you get into the mind of both of those twins, those realities, to see what they're both like, you will never be able to see yourself within that distinct realm. People think I'm crazy when I say that we are not new. Babies don't make us beginning. Being born here is not our beginning. There is no beginning and there is no ending. Prove to me that there's a beginning and there's an ending. And tell me where the beginning start. And don't take me into the Bible. Because we know that that was written by man. And I know that these stories are superseded by other historical figures. By millions and millions of years inside of this dimension. Not, not in other dimensions. Because there's other dimensions where... Um, other entities, because the, because we're not talking about a literal people in Genesis. We're talking about an extraterrestrial type of energy. And I've explained that in my past videos. If you go and check it out, I don't remember the name right now. Because again, I'm surfing on the waves of the constellations. I feel good. But right now... We have to start being able to connect to ourselves through the things that we are seeking. And the things that we are seeking, if we put it outside of ourselves, we'll never find ourselves. Like I said, we're beyond energy, but I have to use this language because I'm still here with entities or what we call humans, who is even on a higher level that can overstand what I'm saying, and it's things that I don't know. What we call intelligence is infinite. It's a forever evolving door that we evolve through, consciously and unconsciously. It's things that your brain picking up on right now that you can't pick up on. It will only allow you to see it in your dream state. Why? Because when you dream, you are actually another being in that dream. So if you are Mark or if you are David here, you're not Mark or David in your dream. They don't know you as these people. They know you as somebody else.
this may seem far-fetched to many, but many of us have gone places that we have no knowledge that we have been in our dream state and brought back things in our memory that is not activated yet. But once it becomes activated, you are going to have people gravitating towards you from that dream realm that was there in these dreams with you. You are not just some small piece of physical thing. You are an unseen, you are an unknown, which you all cannot be smelled. You, they can't hear you, but they can see by way of feeling. And I always say that. We are beyond senses. Even though sound is the greatest or the closest that we'll ever be able to see ourselves by way of hearing. The greatest way, the greatest we'll be able to see ourselves is through the sound. The voice that we speak outside of a mind that is not here in this dimension. Our mind is not here. Our brain is, but our mind is not. That mind is you, and your mind is the truth. So instead of seeking things outside of yourself here, seek the mind that you are. We are invincible. We are out of limits. There is no limit to what we are. There is no limit to where we can go. This place puts a limit on you. And when you allow it to put a limit on you, then you have no outer limits. It's like being on a track that's only a mile. Your frequency can only flow within a mile, meaning your thinking can only go within a mile of thinking. You can't go no further than where they're telling you to think. You are your thoughts. So if, if you, as your thoughts, is only running a mile or running in the circles, then guess what? You will never be able to see the other extensions of your universe, of your reality. All right? So with that much said, Black Science TV 111, Oseka 4, I'm out. Peace.